What's going on guys? It is Mr. Becky sir. We're going to do a brand new video. With today's video, we're going to be doing an analysis on Mr. Hippo's voice lines, aka his stories, because they're way too extended in length to be considered voice lines. So, uh, we're going to be doing an analysis. If you guys like the video, you know, the usual. I don't need to explain it. So, uh, let's, uh, let's start up the clip. My friend, you have met a terrible, terrible demise. But, uh, you know, I, I don't feel too bad about it. After all, if, if it weren't from me, it would have just been from someone else, you know? I guess what I'm trying to say is life, life goes on. Well, well from, for everyone else, life goes on. Not, not for you. You're, you're dead. But that's neither here nor there. It reminds me of one summer day in the park. I was having just a delightful picnic with my good friend Orville. And I said to him, I said, Orville, I, I have a story. And he said to me, what's the significance of the story? And I said to him, Orville, not every story has to have significance, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes a story is just a story. You try to read into every little thing and find meaning in everything anyone says, you'll just drive yourself crazy. I had a friend do it once. Wasn't pretty, we talked about it for years. And not only that, but you'll likely end up believing something you shouldn't believe, and thinking something you shouldn't think, or, or assuming something you shouldn't assume, you know? So this could relate to the fan base, or the community. So, we're theorists. A lot of us are theorists. Half of the community is theorists. I am one of them. My friend is also one of them. We make theories. We, we we make theories of the timeline, the lore bits, all of that, because Fred's of Freddy's is large, and it has a lot of lore, and he is talking about us, because let's be honest here, if you're a theorist, every little detail you find in one of the Fred's of Freddy's video games, you, 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 you think it's significant to the timeline, which sometimes it isn't, like MatPat always says that he doesn't do quit like Scott doesn't do coincidences. He like or there isn't like like every little detail has importance. Well, not always, which is why sometimes we assume something we shouldn't assume and believe so we should believe. Like Mr. Hippo exclaimed. So it's basically Scott saying to us that sometimes you shouldn't like look up and think that the littlest of details have so much importance to the story. Sometimes, I said, uh, a story is, is just a story. So just be quiet for one second of your life and eat your sandwich, okay? Of course, it was only then I realized I made sandwiches, and poor Orville was having such difficulty eating it. Elephants have those clumsy hands, you know? Actually, I, I suppose that's the problem. They don't have hands at all, do they? They're, they're all feet. I, I couldn't imagine someone asking me to eat a sandwich with my feet. Now, if I recall correctly, there was a bakery nearby. I said to him, Orville, let me go get you some rye bread. Now, I'm unsure if elephants enjoy rye bread, but I assure you that Orville does. Now, this was on a Tuesday, which was good because rye bread was always fresh on Tuesday. They made sourdough bread on Monday and threw it out Wednesday, or rather, they sold it at a discount for people wanting to feed the ducks, and then probably at the end of the day, finally, they threw it all out. I, I don't recall. I do remember a man who would bring his son to the bakery every Wednesday and then go feed the ducks. He would buy all of the sourdough bread. Of course, you know, you're not supposed to feed the ducks sourdough bread at all. It swells up in their stomach, and then they all die. It, uh, at, least, at least that's what I've heard. You know, I, I never saw any ducks die myself, but I did notice a substantial decrease in the duck population over the course of a few years. I just never thought to stop the man and tell him that he was killing the ducks by feeding them sourdough bread. And if you want my opinion on the matter, <laughs> and I told Orville this as well, if you want to feed ducks or birds or any kind for that matter, it's best to buy seed. I mean, when you think about it, breads of any sort don't occur in nature. They don't grow on trees or spring up from the bushes. I don't think birds know what to do with bread. What was I saying?
Now, this could relate to the fact that people, I think it, I think it still relates, relates to the community with theorists, again. Because um, a lot of theorists, they make a bunch of theories that sometimes are good or sometimes really bad. There are some theories, though, that make zero sense and it confuses everybody around them. Which is like this, Mr. Hippo saying that that fe that he heard somebody tell him, or he heard that overheard that somebody was talking about feeding sourdough bread to birds, or I mean ducks specifically, would kill them. But he's never seen it himself, and that relates to like that connects to theorists where they make a bunch of theories but don't have their facts straight and just make a conclusion on. A few little facts which confuses the story and creates misinterpretation which which is why um, Scott has to retcon his stories and it, each game he has to like clarify like a certain part of the story in the previous game oh oh yes yes so I bought Orville some rye bread what a fine day it was well uh, it seems that your journey has ended. Very sorry about that. It was it was always going to end this way, of course. If it weren't by me, it would have just been by some other, you know, terrible thing. Just, you could not imagine how terrible it would be. Just, I get scared thinking about it. Glad it's not me. It reminds me of a, of a time I was speaking to my good friend Orville. We were, we were sitting on a park bench watching the pigeons. I was on the left, he was on the... Oh, wait, was I on the right or left? Anyways, it doesn't matter. We were sitting on there watching the pigeons. And uh, I, I said to Orville, Friend, those birds are frozen. And he kind of looked at me like I lost my mind. But I reminded him that it was winter, you know, and often birds will sit in a tree until they freeze. And then they, they you know, sort of fall to the ground until the sun warms up and, and they can, you know, move around again. So I said to Orville, you might as well save those breadcrumbs until the birds thaw because they can't very well enjoy them in the condition they're in. To which he asked what I meant and asking what condition the crumbs should be in before he threw them to the birds, assuming that I meant the birds couldn't enjoy the breadcrumbs in the condition that the crumbs were in, when in fact I had meant the birds could not enjoy them in the condition that the birds were in, considering that the birds were frozen. You know, so he took a moment and then threw his last handful onto the ground. I said to him, Orville, why did you throw the breadcrumbs to the birds when I just told you they're frozen? To which he responded, the breadcrumbs are not frozen. Again, misunderstanding my words. I didn't mean to say that the breadcrumbs were frozen when I said I told you they're frozen. I'd been referring to the birds. <laughs> you know, in hindsight, what, what I should have said was, and this would make perfect sense, why did you throw the breadcrumbs to the birds when the birds are frozen? He misunderstood upon my correction, stating that he didn't know what else to do with the breadcrumbs and that perhaps, you know, when the birds thawed, they'd still be able to eat the crumbs. So I, I, I said to Orville, I said, and this is what I said to him, I said, Orville, the birds may be dead. Now this could relate to what I was just talking about a second ago. Yeah, it wasn't a second ago, but it was, it was like a minute ago. So... He's talking about, basically, it's a connection to Scott and clarification. Now, if you recognize the ma the mic trap theory, I used to believe in it too. I, I, I was not smart. I used to believe in it too. But eventually, like a, a lot of people thought that Mike was the one in Springtrap. But Scott knows that William was in Springtrap, not Michael. So he decided to try to clarify it in the next game. Because in FNAF 6... Not FNAF 6, FNAF sister location, uh, when, when the uh, cutscene, people thought Michael was in Springtrap, because it, uh, after Mike did his speech, there was Springtrap at the end, and Mike's speech, uh, it uh, referenced him, like he should be dead and all that, he said he should be dead, and he's not, and all that, and people thought Mike was in Springtrap, but he wasn't. So, Scott tried to clarify in the next game. FNAF 6. How did he do that? First, um, I well, actually, even before FNAF 6, when Game Theory did a theory that Mike was not in Springtrap because 
because, you know, it's not possible because he, he showed the facts. I'm not going to explain it. Just watch this video. It was the final the final FNAF theory before the other theories. And, and then uh, Scott agreed with him. It was true that Mike was not in Spigtrap. But then people still believed in it. The, I call them Mike Trappers because they still believe in Mike Trap. So then if FNAF 6... Not only is the voice for Scrap Jab different from Michael, in the credits of FNAF 6, it shows William Afton and nobody else. It doesn't show Springtrap, it doesn't show Scrap Jab, it doesn't show Michael, because Michael is the protagonist. Boom. Yeah, people still believe. And, he, and then when, he, when um, uh, Scott said that, that he's in Springtrap, people started saying, Oh, well, what if Michael was in Springtrap and William was in Scrap Trap? Because uh, there, people thought there were two suits, but Scott actually retconned Springtrap to look like sp what Scraptrap looks like now, which caused even more confusion. Just like uh, Orville misunderstanding uh, Mr. Hippo's like his uh, speech of like well, not speech like what he said. What he said. He said that he couldn't he couldn't feed the breadcrumbs to the birds because the birds were frozen, and then he misinterpreted. It the his sentence and say that the breadcrumbs breadcrumbs are frozen when he meant that the birds were frozen. But then when he was corrected, he said, "Oh well, what what's the what's the birds that thought that I can feed them with crumbs?" Again, misunderstanding his sentence. He can't he can't feed the ducks um what are the birds the crumbs because they are dead. They're frozen. It seems that you have met a, a horrible demise, my friend. But uh, you know these these things happen, and, and life life goes on. Not for you, obviously. You're you're dead. But uh, it reminds me of a time I was I was having a conversation with my friend Orville. We were uh, where were we? I think we were by the we the the river. We were sitting by the river and watching the fish leap over the falls. And uh, I, I said to Orville, you know, sometimes I feel like a fish leaping over and over again, always trying to get somewhere, though I don't know where, only to find myself in the jaws of a beast. He, of course, looked at me uh, surprised, you know. Have you been in the jaws of a beast, friend? To which I said, no, of course not, Orville. I said, no, 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 I, I simply meant that Life can seem like a relentless endeavor to overcome meaningless obstacles, only to meet an equally meaningless fate regardless of your efforts, regardless of the obstacles you've passed. And uh, Orville, he, he, he stood and proceeded to drape me with a picnic cloth, to which I, I, I asked him, I said, Friend, what, what are you doing? He looked at me very concerned, really. I feel like you've gotten too much sun. Indeed, <laughs> indeed I had. He proceeded to pour me a glass of just ice-cold lemonade. Ooh, you ever mix it with iced tea? You do like a little half lemonade, half, ooh, it's so, you should try it some, well you can't because you're dead, but anyways, so you may be asking yourself, how did I go from sitting by the falls and drinking lemonade to being wedged in the air duct? Not only with Orville, but with an entire assortment of fruity-colored friends. Well, there's, uh, there's really no good answer to that, but perhaps I met a demise of my own at some point, and this is my afterlife, or my dream, or whatever it might mean, I, I honestly don't know. Or, maybe it doesn't mean anything at all. Maybe it doesn't mean anything at all. This is lore. Now... Remember when Scott said that FNAF 6 would be the game that tie loose ends, even though it caused more complications? But eventually we started figuring out that it was still a loose end. Yeah, so... Uh, when he started saying that, how did I go by sitting by the falls to drink lemonade to be wedged in the air ducts with his friends, he's saying that he died. And he even says at the last paragraph that he met a demise of his own, and this is his afterlife. And he's tried to say that he, he he actually doesn't remember how he died. 
He he's even said it himself. There's really no, there's really no good answer to that. He doesn't know how he died. He knows that he probably met a demise of his own, and this is his afterlife. So, and if you remember FNAF 6, the good ending, it was the, um, the happiest day mini game. There were Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Golden Freddy, and the Puppet. But there was also another couple of animatronics at the left. Yeah, the left. And they had masks that resemble the mediocre melodies, including, uh, excuse me, including Orville and Mr. Hippo. The purple mask is Mr. Hippo. The orange is Orville. The uh, pink is Pink Patch, and the green is Happy Frog. All of them are mediocre melodies, and they were at the they were in the same mini game as the Dead Children, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Golden Freddy, and the Puppet. Mind blown. So remember when he, Scott said he was gonna tie loose ends and all that, and yeah, he did because. I'm pretty sure at some point somebody was questioning why in FNAF, FNAF 3 there were other children. Not not just because they were in the, um, the, the, like, in the, what, not just because they were at the scene of, like, his, his missed birthday party, or her, because Golden Freddy's Cassidy, um, I don't need to explain that, but they met, the, they met a demise as well, so... Yeah, that's, that's what I think. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you guys want to see more theories, analysis, and all that, I'll probably do an analysis on everybody's voice lines in Ultimate Custom Night, except for Mr. Hippo's, since I already did it. Because there is a lot of lore that is going on. And I have a lot of proof, and... Well, not proof, I have a lot of theories and a lot of things that's going on in Ultimate Custom Night. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.